Hi, welcome back to New York City Travel Tips and Hacks. This is Katie. And this is Lori. This podcast is designed to give you kind of bite-sized audio information about planning your trip to New York City so that we can help you have the best experience possible. This podcast is sponsored by Free Tours by Foot, a walking tour company that offers pay-what-you-wish walking tours in New York City, and also a variety of self-guided audio tours. Today, we are talking about Central Park. We're going to cover a brief history, things to do and see, things to do and see with children, and general planning tips. But before we begin, if you haven't already, click subscribe to our podcast. Um, so let's jump in with first where Central Park actually is. Um, Central Park is very large, actually. It covers 843 acres in Manhattan. Uh, the lower edge of the park is 59th Street. It goes up to 110th Street. The east end is 5th Avenue, and the west end is called Central Park West, which would be 8th Avenue. Um, so a very large amount of uh, green space. And just for a, a very brief history of how this place came to be, uh, it's actually a surprising long and complex story. Um, but the short version is that the plans for putting a park in this area were approved by the city in the 1850s. Uh, and the reason was to bring access to green space and to nature uh, for New Yorkers. New Yorkers lived in increasingly crowded conditions, and this was seen as a very important step for the city. Even though the plans were approved in the 1850s, the entire park took about 20 years to complete. Just picture this. Children were playing in cemeteries. Um, people were picnicking in cemeteries. Yeah. It, even though it sounds really strange to a modern listener, it was considered a completely normal thing to do in the 19th century. Those were really the only quiet green spaces available to New Yorkers uh, until Central Park was built. So it was a very important thing for our city. So let's jump in with some things to do and see. Okay, so we there's a lot of features. There's water features, there's landscaping, there's architecture. So there's only one straight path in the entire park, and that is called the mall. And once you walk down the mall, you'll recognize it in many television shows and and uh, movies. Uh, our water features are very generically named the lake, the pond, reservoir. And then the most famous, I would say, is Bethesda Fountain, which is kind of like the centerpiece. centerpiece it is there. beautiful. Uh, you'll probably, again, recognize that. Um, it's actually right, the terrace that Bethesda Fountain is on is right at the end of the mall. And I would say those are two of the most famous or recognizable parts of Central Park, mostly because of their appearances in films or in television yeah. shows. Um, one of my favorite parts of the park is called the Ramble, and that's actually just to the north of those areas that we just mentioned. The Ramble is designed to feed Feel like you're in a natural wild forest. You're not. It's completely landscaped and man maintained, but it is a nice escape. Um, yeah. kind of right there in the middle of Manhattan. And because of its wooded nature, it is also host to a lot of wildlife, uh, most specifically birds. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. We have something called Cleopatra's Needle, which is an obelisk that was actually, I guess, the oldest thing in Central Park. It was erected in 1450 BC, and it now has its home in Central Park. Uh, Belvedere Castle, which is a great place to bird watch. Um, you can get the uh, you can rent binoculars there to bird watch. Uh, the Dairy, a building actually called the Dairy. Uh, this is where tourists will get their information on the park, but it was originally erected because children needed milk and they needed safe milk. So that's originally where the name came from. And probably one of the famous places uh, is Strawberry Fields, right? Um, Strawberry Fields is right there. Yeah, though, at the west side of the park, uh, 72nd Street. And it is dedicated in honor of John Lennon, hence the Name Strawberry Fields, Beatles song Strawberry Fields Forever. Uh, it is right near where uh, John Lennon formerly lived, which was in the Dakota building right there on the edge yeah. of the park. Very, very popular spot in Central Park for tourists. We do have a surprising amount of wildlife in Central Park. I know I mentioned that a bit ago. I want to tell you a little bit more about what you might expect to see. I know people think we have no nature in Manhattan. That's not true. Um, <laughs> you will see a lot of birds. Uh, it is actually a very popular spot for bird watchers in Central Park, particularly the 
ramble the north woods, the, the more wooded areas. Bird watching is extremely popular here. Actually, because of our location um, on the Atlantic flyover, since Central Park opened, there have been 280 different kinds of birds recorded as being sighted in Central Park. It's pretty amazing. You'll actually see a lot of turtles in Central Park. We even have a body of water called Turtle Pond, if you want to see the <laughs> most of them. We have squirrels, chipmunks. You'll actually see foxes from time to time, uh, increasing sightings of coyotes in Central Park in recent years, um, some hawks, uh, as well as some falcons in Central yeah. Park. Another feature, which I think it makes Central Park so dear, are all their arches. Every arch is built differently and our bridges, which would be considered an arch, but they're just so picturesque and everywhere you turn, you're running into some beautiful arch. They are pretty amazing and they are all over the park. Um, Central Park was designed by two men, Frederick Law Olmsted and Calvert Vox. Calvert Vox was an architect. Um, that was what he did as his profession. He actually had buildings all over New York City at the time. And he is the one who specifically designed all of these beautiful bridges and arches that you'll see in Central Park. So let's jump into some activities you could do in Central Park. Yeah, so I would say the most popular is boating and you can get you can rent the boat at the boathouse and you'd be boating on the lake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's probably one of the more popular ones in the summertime concerts, uh, theater, Shakespeare in the park is in Central Park, carriage rides, but you can get carriage rides in the winter as well, right? Yeah, um, you can. It's yeah. just cold. <laughs> but you definitely can. In the wintertime, you can go ice skating. We have a couple of different ice rinks in Central Park. Woolman Rink towards the south end and Lasker Rink towards the north end. Again, we did mention bird watching, very popular to do. You can borrow binoculars and the other things you would need from Belvedere Castle, uh, right at the south end of the Great Lawn. You'll see a lot of people out just doing general sporting activities, and that'll actually be a mix of tourists and locals. Uh, you'll see people out jogging. You'll see people out biking. Uh, you see people roller skating. We have a lot of different sports facilities in Central Park. That is geared a little more towards the locals, but you'll see people playing tennis and basketball and baseball all right there. You'll even see people fishing, surprisingly. <laughs> Uh, you can also take a bike tour around Central you Park. Yeah, because people uh, you bike. can take a bike tour around mm -hmm. Central Park. Uh, there are a lot of walking tours, including our Pay What You Wish walking tours of Central Park. We also have a self-guided audio tour available. If, if a group walking tour doesn't really work with your schedule when you're visiting, that's also something you yeah. can check out. Again, the, the history of this place is surprisingly complex. And all of these different features, like Cleopatra's Needle and Belvedere Castle, these all have their own amazing story that goes with them. So so there was just really a lot to, to hear about. Central Park is also a really great place to visit with children, uh, with small children. There's a lot of very kid-friendly things in Central Park. Just so you know, for general information, most of what we're going to be talking about is located in the southeast part of the park. It's actually all pretty clustered together. One of my favorite spots for kids is the Conservatory Waters. There's really a lot right there in this little area. The Conservatory Waters is a little ornamental pool and you can rent toy sailboats and sail them on this little pool. Uh, it's a great activity. And right in that area along the edge of the conservatory waters are uh, some, some statues that pay tribute to some children's literature. Uh, you'll see Hans Christian Andersen reading his fairy tale, The Ugly Duckling, mm -hmm. to a little bronze duckling. And then at the north end, you will see uh, the Alice in Wonderland statue. It's Alice in the Mad Hatter Tea Party. That is probably the most popular statue in New York City. It has to be. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think with kids and adults, um, yeah. like, like I think they really love it equally. So for both of these statues right along the conservatory water, just so you know, again, these are really designed to be enjoyed by children. They're called climbing statues. You will see kids climbing all over them like a jungle gym. That is absolutely okay and encouraged. In fact, not in this same area, uh, right immediate area, but very close by and also very popular with children is the Balto statue. That's my favorite statue. <laughs> children and dog lovers. I love the Balto <laughs> statue. <laughs> The Balto statue, uh, if you're familiar with the animated children's film, um, that is very, very loosely based on uh, real events that happened in the 1920s. And so this statue of a Siberian husky named Balto is actually in tribute to over 150 sled dogs. They were all a part of this rescue mission for a town in Alaska. And so the statue there in Central Park is very well loved. You'll see where it's been petted on its ears and its sides by children who visit. So definitely worth a visit. Um, Central Park Zoo 
Yeah, so, so they do have admission for the Central Park Zoo. It's not a large zoo. It's not like going to the Bronx Zoo. Uh, so if you're looking to do more of a shorter excursion as far as a zoo is concerned, highly recommend. Or you could just not go in. You just walk the path going through it, which you don't have to pay to do. And you've got the zoo on to your left and to your right. And then walk straight to the Delacour clock, which is my favorite clock, I swear. If you catch it when it's when it's ringing, all the characters are dancing around. You could distract your kids. Music. Yeah. <laughs> like 44 different songs that it plays. So fortunately, yeah. the park workers don't have to listen to the same thing over and over again. <laughs> uh, there are a lot of playgrounds in Central Park. You could take your child to a different playground every single day of your trip and probably not hit all of them. Um, they are all different too. Um, so if you're looking for some variety, they are all different. They are all over Central Park. Probably the easiest thing to do is to um, either go on the park's website or to find a kiosk for the Central Park Conservancy. And somebody there could give you a map and that'll show you where all of the different playground options are. Most of those playgrounds also have bathrooms located right by them. So how much time should you spend in Central Park? It's really oh, a Central Park <laughs> could take hours, <laughs> days. <laughs> yeah, it depends on how much time you want to dedicate to it. Depends on how much time you have to dedicate to it. If you're short yeah. on time, I would suggest the southeastern corner where you can get the biggest bang for your time or your biggest bang for your buck, right? That's where you're going to hit a lot of spots in a very short amount of time. It is the bigger touristy area where you're going to run into much more people. Um, but again, you know, if you do have time and you're interested, you could go to Central Park every day of your trip again and probably not cover it. So if you are looking to try to cover almost all of the park, I recommend breaking it into sections or thinking of it in three different sections. I would call the lower section anything from the south end of the park up until uh, about where Bethesda Terrace is, um, kind of right along the 72nd Street Traverse. And then the middle section, I would say, is that up until about where the reservoir starts, that middle section. And that's going to have the Great Lawn and that's going to have the Delacorte and, and Cleopatra's Needle. And then the north end of the park is anything above the reservoir all the way to the north edge of Central Park. So if you break it down into those sections, I think it is a little more manageable. Um, and there's different things to do in each section. So for your planning purposes, I think also important to mention uh, food options and restrooms. There's plenty of both all through the park, but there are some specifics to know. Um, Central Park is home to a few sit-down restaurants. Um, including the very famous Tavern on the Green and the Boathouse. Once you get north of the Boathouse, <laughs> there's really not anything in the ways of sit-down restaurants. You're going to mostly find carts. So that's going to be hot dogs and pretzels, ice cream, sodas. So just know that if you are looking for an actual meal, you might want to do that when you're there in the lower section of the park. Or if you're going to explore one of those northern sections, you know, maybe eat before you go or bring a picnic, you're not going to find as much. There are restrooms all over Central Park. <laughs> um, but something very important to note is not all of them are open year round. There are some in the park that are closed over the winter. So just be aware of that. Again, you can always ask a Central Park Conservancy worker and they can point you to the very closest restroom that is open. I promise you there's one kind of nearby. <laughs> And if you get lost, same thing. You can find someone to help you out or you can look on one of the many street lamps. Uh, there's a four digit number and the first two numbers on that is the, the cross street. So if the first two numbers are seven and two, you're at 72nd street. It's right? actually a neat little trick. Um, it can be easy to get turned around in the park. And I think yeah. that's kind of part of the fun is, is, is wandering around a little bit. But if you really need to just orient yourself very quickly, I think that's the absolute fastest way to do it. If you're trying to kind of plan a nice day, there are really a lot of things right around Central Park that you could go and do. You could explore Midtown Manhattan and then do the very lower section of Central Park. That's a really nice day. There's a couple of very famous museums right on the sides of the park. So on the west side, you have the Natural History Museum. On the east side, you have the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Also up the east side, you have the Guggenheim and the Museum of the City of New York. So I think a great day is to kind of plan for, for half the day in the park and then the other half of the day at one of these museums. Museums. It's, it's a great excursion. I do think if you're going to visit Central Park, and again, you want the very most out of this as possible, I highly recommend a tour. <laughs> Um, I agree. You know. I agree because there's so much history behind the park. You'll be amazed. 
you go on a tour and, and everyone says it. I cannot believe I had no idea there's so much behind this park. So it's worth going, taking a tour of the park with a tour guide who will tell you those stories. Yes. Or you can absolutely check out one of our self-guided audio tours of the park as well. If, if a, yeah. again, a group tour doesn't really fit in your schedule, just uh, I, I highly recommend finding some way of getting that information. I think it's so valuable. I know we've covered so much today <laughs> on this podcast. Um, everything that we have talked about is included in related articles um, in our show notes. So if there's something you need to go back to, please take a look at those and it will all be there for you. But hopefully this has helped a little bit uh, figure out what sounds best to you, what you might want to do when you visit Central Park, but it is a must-see in New York City. Absolutely. So if you haven't already, please take a minute to subscribe to our podcast. We have a lot more of these coming up, all sponsored by Free Tours by Foot. So please keep an eye out for our new episodes coming up. And thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.